The Bread of Discourse, John chapter 6, verses 47 to 58. Amen, amen, I say to you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the desert, but they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life with me. You do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him on the last day. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, I have life because of the Father. So also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Unlike your ancestors, who ate and still died, whatever eat, whoever eats this bread will live forever. These things he said while teaching in the synagogue in Capernaum. Um, so the next uh, thing we were going to talk about is the discourse um, for the Eucharist. And um, so this happened in Capernaum, right? This is, yes. This church was built <coughs> over uh, Peter's house. And uh, one thing I remember about this church is it was air-conditioned, which I think was the only church that was air-conditioning, air-conditioned. And that church, um, uh, I had a, I was very grateful to Father Doug and Father Kevin to allow me to, to preach at three of the masses. So this was the first place that I had a chance to, to preach. Um, and that is a, just a very special, special feeling to be able to do that because if you go to the railing and look down, you'll see the footings sure. of the house and the time that Jesus spent there, mm -hmm. carrying Peter's mother-in-law and yep. um, all the things that happened. Uh, and that wasn't house. that the location too of where the <clears throat> the paralytic man was dropped down through Peter's roof and G Jesus healed him? In Capernaum. In Com yep. Yeah. Yes. So that, just like uh, imagine, okay, all these miracles happening. <laughs> yes, and and also uh, at times I felt too, I'm thankful that they preserved these sites. Yes. It would have been very, I mean, you're on the lake, right? You could have easily bulldozed it and put in condominiums or, or whatever, but it's just, it's just so great that um, the people in the church was able to yeah. preserve it. It's this. kind of a, you know, it tells you about the, um, the testament of how valid you know, the locations are because they had been, I mean, through the ages, I mean, thousands and thousands of years that people have, th you know, thought these are special places they right. need to be recognized and preserved right. and it's like all these things are built up over the same location over and over again so you know like okay something special happened yeah. here i remember saying to myself okay god let me just feel a little bit of this power or or you know this this holiness or or can you just help me picture what you know what yeah. that would look like because in these homes i mean you would have the whole family in there um so you didn't have your own room right. and that and that um that family uh, unity was strong yeah, because Capernaum, I mean, in Jesus' time, I don't know, it wasn't a big city, right? No. It was probably you know, maybe 500 people or something. You know? I don't know the population, but it wasn't a big, it wasn't a big area. And I know we've got a, a shot here of the uh, temple where he did the uh, Bread of Life discourse. And that's right, literally right across from this, from this church. And again, a very powerful place because you can just picture Jesus saying what he said and people leaving. It's one of the saddest, for me anyway, in the Bible, where people are just leaving. And then he asks the disciples, and they say, where are we going to go? And that's Peter spoke up at that point, too. And these are people that knew Jesus. I yeah. mean, they're, they're, you know, that's, so you're talking about a small community, and they knew who Jesus was. And, and saw the miracles. Saw the miracles, and, yeah. and then you know, and he says something so shocking that they just can't even comprehend it. And so they, like, don't. I think somewhere, too, that 
Um, it's, it's tied in, again, which would make sense uh, with the feeding of the 5,000 yeah. and then coming back mm -hmm. thinking, okay, this is, this is perfect. Yeah. He's going to feed us every day. Yeah. Yeah. And then, the, and then the, just the, uh, I don't know if it's bravery is the a right word or just the, the moxie or, the, or, or, or just Jesus doubling down and saying, no, I'm not, I'm not kidding. Yeah. This is, this is what, it, yeah. what it's about. Yeah, that's like, that's what you think about is like, well, was he using an allegory or was he just kind of like, but he didn't you know, say that. He, he said, this is what I mean. <laughs> right. Or, or just how, how did Jesus feel when all these people are leaving? Yeah, I know. Right. Like he said, wait a minute, wait yeah, a minute, time I mean, out. Today, if you're time out, trying I didn't to get really a following. Mean that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, just kidding. And uh, no, he didn't. Yeah. Um, yeah. And again, a very small area, not, you know, not, not very big at all. And it, it's pretty easy to picture that just being packed with people um, and being able, for them being able to hear him. Um, say those things and react the way they did. And the apostles kind of saying, well, where are we going to go? Right. We, we're, we're not leaving. We, yeah, we're, yeah, we're in, the, you're in the, for the yeah. long run here. <laughs> and, the, and maybe a little courage for them, too, because I'm sure had they to were be, shocked yeah, just they, like everybody else. They had to be feeling the same thing. That, and like, what they felt when they saw the people leaving. Mm -hmm. Like, oh boy, yeah. here, goes the, yeah. here goes the following. Yeah. I know when I sit in church and, and listen to the Eucharistic prayer and I try to think about kind of like, you know, and I ask God, make this real for me, you know, and, and that will help me to understand because my feeble mind can't wrap it, you know, like them, I can't wrap around it sometimes too. And it's like, I just like right. look at that and say, that's Jesus's body. And sometimes when we're here at church too, we just, we, we lose focus. We yeah. start thinking about, mm -hmm. oh, I got to do this. I got to do that. Oh, mm -hmm. what did I miss? Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. yeah, to be able to do that. Yeah. It's like, it's, it, that, that's, I was thinking it would be a special thing to do uh, a mass right at that location and have the Eucharist, you know, right there. To be able to do that, yeah. yeah. Well, so I think we had the next best thing. I, literally, not more than 100 feet, 150 feet away was the, the church yeah. built over Peter's home. Sure. And um, That's right. You were right there. Yeah, we were right there. Yeah. But, yeah. yeah. There it that, is. That's yeah. it, yeah. And that's, those are some of the... No, that isn't just Peter's house. That, those are other homes. Oh, other, yeah, that's in front that's, of the church. Yeah, the church is built Capernaum, on top of Peter's house. You know, that's, house. that's the whole yeah. community right there. They yeah, are, and um, again, just if you can imagine, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 people living in, in these the, yeah. very small areas. Yeah, yeah, because uh, his mother in law was there, and probably other relatives were all kind of in that same area. Mm -hmm. And it's a beautiful church. There's a, yeah. 